Confused about the cosmos? Can't tell a planet from a star? Then give us just five minutes and we'll show you what they are. Jack Horkheimer, Stargazer, tells you all about the night sky and the biggest show of all, the universe. And now, this week's episode. Earth at Aphelion and start your three planet and great star watch on the 4th of July. Greetings, greetings, fellow stargazers. Believe it or not, on Tuesday, July 6th, our Earth will be at its farthest point from the sun for the entire year, only 94 and a half million miles away, which is three million miles farther than it was when it was at its closest on January 2nd. So why is it hotter right now if the sun is farther away in July than it is in January? Well, it all has to do with our Earth's tilt. In July, our Earth is tilted so that the sun's rays are aimed more directly at the northern hemisphere than they were in January. Just the opposite is true for the southern hemisphere. Think about it. But now, I'd like to show you three planets and one great star, which you can see just after it gets dark out on the 4th of July, and which you can watch move toward each other all month long, resulting in a spectacular meeting on July 30th. Let me show you. Okay, we've got our sky set up for this Sunday night, the 4th of July, just after dark, facing west, where the brightest thing you will see will be planet number two, the brightest planet of them all, and same size as our planet Earth, 8,000 mile wide Venus. And just up to its left, you see a much less bright object, which is Regulus, the star which marks the heart of Leo the Lion. And up to its left, a steadily glowing rouge gold light, planet number four and half the size of planet Earth and Venus, 4,000 mile wide Mars. And up to its left, planet number six, the Lord of the Rings, 75,000 mile wide Saturn. They will look as if they're lined up in a row. And indeed they are, because all the planets travel on a narrow pathway around the sky called the ecliptic, so named because it is also the pathway along which eclipses always occur. And now, here's the fun part. Make a mental note of where Venus is in relation to Regulus, and then watch every single night, because Venus and Regulus will move toward each other at the rate of one degree each night, which is the equivalent of two full moon widths, and which is really dramatic. You'll get your reward Friday night, when Venus and Regulus will be at their closest only one degree apart which means that only two full moons could fit between them. Then if you continue to watch every night, you will notice that each night Venus moves a little closer to Mars, and Mars moves a little closer to Saturn. On Friday the 16th, Venus and Mars will be 15 degrees apart, while Mars and Saturn will be only seven and a half degrees apart. But continue watching. And a week later, on Friday the 23rd, Venus and Mars will be only 11 and a half degrees apart, and Mars and Saturn only four degrees apart. And ta-da, it gets even better, because during the last week of July, they'll continue moving closer to each other and have an exquisite meeting on Friday, July 30th, with just after sunset, Venus and Mars will be less than eight degrees apart, and Mars and Saturn less than two degrees apart, and all three will form an isosceles triangle. Wow! Once again, this Sunday, July 4th, Friday, July 9th, Friday, July 16th, Friday, July 23rd, and ta-da, Friday, July 30th. Start your planet watch on the 4th of July and keep looking up.